Well, everybody, this is Mike Nelson of the Mike Nelson Show. Make sure to subscribe right now if you haven't subscribed already. Today I'm here with uh, David Watson of Alchemy Fire. How are you doing today, David? I'm doing great, Mike. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no problem. So, David, what's what's the story behind uh, you know you, yourself and and music? You know, when did your whole journey kick off? Uh, what were you listening to growing up? Uh, why did you decide to become a musician? Well, um, it start. I, I was I've been singing my whole life basically uh but I, I took a different path than a lot of musicians do i i went in the marines right out of high school and i started traveling a lot and seeing the world and but when i got out of this when i thank got you out for your of, service thank you when i got yeah. out of the marines, that's when i started singing in rock bands i moved to cape cod massachusetts and started singing there and uh yeah, I, it was it was a, my beginning journey, kind of, you know, getting confident on stage and stuff like that. So Boston was kind of like my my playground for a long time until I got that confidence to to, you know, pursue further things. A lot of my idols when I was younger, I, you know, I loved Elton John uh, when I was a kid. I loved Deep Purple. I mean, Ian Gillen was God to me. Um Literally, I mean, he was in Jesus Christ Superstar, and that was kind of like my introduction to uh, to hard rock and screaming. I, I actually I fell in love with it, and I work on the Monsters of Rock cruise as well. And I just got back two days ago from Miami and doing these, and I got to meet. How was that? How was the Monsters of Rock? Was it cool? It was awesome. It was. It was. Okay. You know, I do it. I do it every year. I work on it. I do hospitality. Okay. So, I get to be backstage and, you know, cater to the rock stars. And I got to meet Glenn Hughes. And wow. it was, I mean, he took my hand and he was, he was so gentle and so kind. And I was like, oh my God, it was, that was probably the highlight of the whole cruise for me is being back there and, and talking to him. And it was, you know, cause I mean, he was in deep purple and he was, he was the screamer of the band you know back in what 75 was the, the california jam yeah go listen to it and you know so that that was that was pretty much my journey uh up into the 80s i mean i was in the marines in the 80s so i kind of i didn't really fall out of music i always listened to music but i was i was stationed over in okinawa and a lot of a lot of you know bands like scorpions and and stuff like that were really big um, but it wasn't until the nineties really that I, you know, when Soundgarden came out and I, that's when I really, I think I really found my voice because I, I just loved that. I, I know it's, I know it's called grunge era, you know, but the bands like bands like Soundgarden were, were very prominent in my life. You know, I, I loved that kind of just that guttural singing and, and screaming. And that that's it reminded me of the of the old old Ian Gillen type stuff back in the 70s. So that was that was pretty much my journey up up until today, you know. So when did you finally uh, get a chance to, you know, sing and, you know, get into a band Did that kind of started in the 90s as well? It started uh, <clears throat> literally um, right when I got out of the Marines, I was sitting on a porch step um on cape cod and um and uh my neighbor this guy named donnie rainwater he was <clears throat> guitar tech for i don't remember it was either edgar or johnny winter he was a guitar wow. tech and he um i was i was out on the porch playing my guitar and, and singing and he handed me a cassette <clears throat> and this is 19 1980 seven 1988 somewhere around there okay he gave me a cassette and he goes i want you to listen to this you sound like this guy and it was queens it okay. was uh the first queens album which of course i listened to the cassette i go i don't sound anything like this guy <laughs> Do it away. Yeah. but it 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 kind of piqued my interest so i joined a band called philosopher on cape cod uh back then and then eventually People heard me and um, uh, this one band was doing a studio project and they're like, we need a, a screamer. We need a guy that can sing these high, high notes and sing really low, you know? 
So I, I joined those guys. I did my first, um, you know, tape recording, you know, it was back analog back in that day. And yeah. I just, it, I got the bug. I couldn't stop. So I just started whoring myself out to all these different bands <laughs> until I found the right mix. You know, I thought I had, I thought I had found one when this woman heard me, I was backstage at a Pixies show. I don't know if you know who the Pixies were. Yeah, the Pixies, yeah. So I was I was in Boston at the Orpheum Theater and I'm I had backstage passes and I'm down in the I'm talking to Kim Deal, the bass player. And she's like, What do you do? You know, you got long hair. Back then it was dark <laughs> like yours, you know, yeah. it was down in my ass. And and she's she's like, What do you do? I go, I'm a singer. And uh, you know, she goes, so where's your band? And I go, I don't have one. I'm, I'm looking for one. So she screams out mm -hmm. uh, down, down in this backstage area. She's like, hey, anybody looking for a singer? And mm -hmm. uh, this one kid goes, my mom's a promoter and, and she is. So I go, so she hooked me up with this, you know, with this woman who was looking for this final piece of this band that she had built of these musicians from Berkeley. Wow, and, and dude, they picked me up in a limousine and drove me up north, uh, almost on the North New Hampshire border. Like we had wow. to go, we had to go through a security gate, you know, to get in. And this this uh, this room that we were rehearsing in was the size of my house. Wow. And I, I I said, Mike, I'm like, I don't care what these guys sound like. I'm in. <laughs> I don't wow. care, you know, and I was at the time, I think I was 27, you know, and they liked me. They were like, and you know, they, they took me back home in the limousine and whatnot. And I'm on Cape Cod going back to Cape Cod. I'm like, <laughs> I, I made it, you know, I get the call the next day from the woman and she goes, Dave, the guys loved you, but you're too old. <laughs> oh, <laughs> wow. Ah, I'm 27. You know? Yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, but it's it, it didn't stop. I just kept chugging away, chugging away, and you know, moved to Florida after that. Um, had had a band called Just in Case down there, original band, and and then eventually, you know, because I was in advertising for many many years, you know, that was my my main source of income. They transferred me out to Colorado. And then from Colorado, I went to L.A. and signed with a band called The Constant on uh, Capitol. Okay. And and then moved to Vegas. And I think, you know, L.A. and Vegas, that's kind of when things really picked up for me. That's because, you know, Kill Ritual was like a, a big point in my life because we did, you know, a couple albums and some really good tours, um, which really kind of put me on the map and doing recordings with with people over in the uk and you know, over in europe kind of opened up these doors for me which has been where i've been at now and that's how paul found me as well talking about how the alchemy fire uh, project kind of started well it was they um there's a website out there called band mix like i had yeah. signed up on band mix <clears throat> a thousand years ago i don't even remember i had the account <laughs> you know, um, so when Paul called me up, I was I was in Las Vegas at the time, uh, still and still still am. And he called me up and he's like, uh, yeah, I heard you. And we're looking for a singer for this project. And I was like, where did you hear me? He goes on band mix. And I go, what? It was just <laughs> weird that he found me on band mix. And and then he went down the rabbit hole of listening to all my music and everything I'd done. It was it was really good timing because I had just left Kill Ritual. You know, we had parted ways before we did the third album. Um, and so it was, it was really good timing. I had no ties in Las Vegas at the time, you know. Um, so Paul flew to Las Vegas just to meet me. And I thought that was cool because <clears throat> he wanted to get to know who I was. He's like, you know, is this guy an asshole or you know whatever <laughs> and so we flew to vegas <clears throat> we hung out we had a great time we talked a lot of philosophy a lot of alchemy because you know i'm i'm a, I, I do reiki i'm an energy worker i you know and i'm very much in 
into metaphysics and 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 you know and spirituality and stuff like that and and so is paul so it was like it, it was a great great meeting of minds you know so that was in july of 2019 and he just said to me he goes so what are you doing i go nothing he goes why don't you come over to england so i did i went and lived in england for half a year wow. and recorded that one album that just put out this past year um and it was it was serene you know i was in the i was in the the outskirts of nottingham england which is in the midlands of england okay and it was beautiful weather at the time i felt like robert plant you know <laughs> here i am in these little towns with stone buildings and horses and sheep and you know and here I am recording in this recording studio with that in the window. Wow. It was magical. It was just magic. So the the writing for that, this last album just flowed. It just flowed right out. It was abs. So that's how it started. Now, now, Paul had done the recording with the drummer. I don't know if you're familiar with the band Soil. Yeah, or, I've heard of them. Yeah. Or Oppressor. Okay. They, so Tom Schofield is from Soil. Okay. Um, he, he and Tom got together in Florida and, and basically wrote the initial tracks of everything. Now they didn't they didn't know who they were going to get as a singer at the time. They were, mm -hmm. you know, Tom was thinking it was going to be like his singer who sang for Drowning Pool, you know. So he's he, he's a very guttural, you know, kind of Bill Anselmo kind of screamer guy, you know. Um, and I'm more melodic. So so when Tom laid down the drum tracks for this album, he was laying it down thinking it was going to be like a thrash metal kind of thing. We, you know, nobody knew. We didn't know. We didn't know how it was going to mix. But I think that's what made it so magical because we all come from these these different territories. I mean, you know, Paul's from the Judas Priest kind of thing. And me, I'm, you know, the deep purple kind of soulful david coverdale type of singer thing and and then you know tom being from like death metal basically it just somehow somehow <laughs> mixed perfectly it was like when we listened to the tracks afterwards we we're going wow this actually worked we didn't know we had no clue it was going to work and it just we were it, the excitement of that was was amazing so now now that we have five members in the band that are committed to this now we know the trajectory now we're like focused so this you know this second album here is going to be it's going to be killer you know because they're, you know we listen to the first album which is really good but we're hearing things and going yeah i wish i would have done that i wish i would have done this i wish i would have you know so it's we're really excited about this next album so. Now with the first album, you guys, uh, you know, you you talked about you know living in England. Do you think that that kind of uh, you know that helped a lot then to kind of make the album right, making it in person in in England? That was like better than being in you know remote, right? Yeah, um, when you're sitting down with an engineer, and and he suggest you know the the guy at the time was Misha Nikolic. And Misha Nikolic is he plays for uh, plays guitar for a, a band called Wishbone Ash. Who are okay, yeah, the seventies band, yeah, yeah, these band, yeah. yeah. yeah so yeah. he's at the console, <clears throat> and he would go, he would go, you know, Dave, you know what would sound cool, you know, and when you have somebody sitting there like that, and they 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 know your range, and they you know they they know how to influence your range a little bit better than you might with your own whatever you're making up in your head about yourself, and. I I go, all right, I'll try that. And we do it. And I go, whoa, I never would have thought of that. You know, because I, I came up with the words and the melody lines, but then the, some of the harmonies were like magical. So when you have that aspect in a room where, when you know, when you're recording remote, which I've done a ton of, you're sitting in your room, it's only you, you're figuring this out yourself. You don't have any feedback until after you send it to someone and they might, you know, come back and go, Hey, try this or whatever. But when you have that, 
you know, instantaneous kind of thing right there. It's, it just opens up these doors where you go, yeah. And then, you know what? I could try this too. Hey, how about, you know, and it just makes it a beautiful thing. So even known we weren't all together recording this last album, we were all together because I mean, Paul and, 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 and the drummer were in the same spot working out those initial things together, you know, where Tom would be like, you know, why don't you try this? And so those two together initially molded the songs. And then me over in England with Paul and with Misha, we, you know, did that kind of mold. And the same thing with the, you know, even though our, our keyboard player that we used was kind of like a higher gun, same thing with the bass player. Um, this next one, we're going to do the same thing. You know, we're all going to be together in one form or fashion. It's not going to be totally remote, I guess. Yeah. It makes so it makes, for this next one. How far have you guys gone in recording the album, or writing the album, the second album? Uh, Paul was just over at Misha's last week, um, laying down some basic tracks. So we got Wayne Dorman in the band. I don't, I don't know if you're familiar with with Wayne at all, but uh, you know Wayne comes from the band Onslaught. And and uh, did I lose you? No, I'm still here. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I guess my screen yeah. went. So uh, Wayne is from the band Onslaught, which is a English metal band. And he's got a ton of touring experiences and he's a great guitar player. So, you know, Paul's got that dual guitar thing that he wants. So they're, they live within like, like 10 miles of each other. So they're working out tracks as well. And then, so we're probably... We're probably about thirty or forty percent into the next album, you know. Okay. I, I I've heard like little bits of it, but I haven't heard, you know, co whole complete songs yet. But I know that they're in the throes of it, and they're excited, and they, you know, I mean, we've got, you know, um, Felipe Kopke, who's from Brazil. He lives over in England, though. He's and he's probably a couple of hours away from Paul. So basically okay. all of the members of the band, keyboards included, you know, um, are all in England. It's just Paul, it's just, you know, uh, me and the drummer. Yeah. So, you know, they're, it's working. It, it, it's working. I haven't, you know, I can't wait to hear some complete tracks because I'm itching. I'm itching to start writing again. Any uh, shows uh, or any big events that the band is going to be doing maybe later this year that you can announce? Nothing to announce. Um, I know that, you know, Wayne and and Tom have both done these major festivals, Vakken, you know, Download, all, all of them. Uh, Wayne, <clears throat> having done all the festivals, you know, Hellfest and all that this past year, that we're definitely focused on that on doing these big festivals but this year i don't know i don't know um it's possible i'm hoping so but we'll, we'll probably be riding off the first album at that point um so you know we're talking i can't really say much because we're you know we're talking to yeah. some people about it and i don't want to jinx it but i'm hoping to be back over in europe by summertime Let's just put it that way. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. Well, I really appreciate you, David, for coming on the show today. It was great talking to you. Yeah, it was great talking to you too, Mike. Thank you for having me. Thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed already.